This episode is sponsored by the Breakthrough to Excellence Network Legacy Scale-Up Program, which is a one-on-one consulting program that will provide you accountability, strategy, and customization for your unique business needs. We all desire to scale our business without the overwhelm. Let's face it, we don't want to scale our businesses anymore in a chaotic environment. This program is tailored made so you never feel like you're ever falling behind again. To find out more on how to work with us, go to www.jasminehaley.com. Welcome to the Breakthrough to Excellence podcast. I'm Jasmine Haley, healthcare provider turned educator, entrepreneur, and startup strategist. Not too long ago, I was burnt out, overwhelmed, depressed, and full of fear from a toxic work environment. I created my business out of necessity to create a legacy I can be proud of today. It helps me transform the lives of women every single day to pursue their dreams and entrepreneurial goals. I created this podcast to share the empowering stories of entrepreneurial women, help you break through self-doubt to your greatness, and share business strategies to help you create a thriving and profitable business. If you are an emerging entrepreneur or business owner that wants to create the mindset needed to escape burnout, reclaim your personal power, and pursue your entrepreneurial dreams, this podcast is for you. Stay tuned and listen in. Welcome to the Breakthrough to Excellence podcast. Our guest for this week's episode is Emily Go. Go. No, I I always forget to say it. And then usually I just like don't even say anything because I really don't care. But yeah. All (laughs) right. uh, So this week's cough with a G. (laughs) Yes. Okay. So this week's uh, guest is Emily Goff. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Right. And we're keeping that, we're keeping that in there. All right. So (laughs) Emily Goff is a human connection and transformational coach, speaker mental health advocate, and host of the Top 200 Room to Grow podcast. With years of coaching experience and both connection and compassion as superpowers, yes, (laughs) Emily's genuine down-to-earth and direct approach will give you the guidance, real-life tools, and perspective you need to help you live and trust yourself more to create the life and relationships you deserve, as seen in Forbes. Welcome. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm just so glad that we got to connect. And it's so random. Like we connected in a clubhouse room and then we had a coffee chat and I'm just so glad that we have gotten to do this. Like all the, all yeah. the connections, right. And this is what we're going to be talking about today. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I thought this was a really valuable topic to have because I've struggled with trying to frame out the way I'm going to show up in my business, but also respecting the fact that I am an introvert by nature and being surrounded by a ton of people is, uh, it doesn't provide energy for me. And in fact, it drains me, even though I love connecting one-on-one and intimate, you know, surroundings, but in the larger groups, it's always a little bit of a hesitation. And as a CEO, that's what we have to do. We have to kind of show up. So I can't wait to hear a little bit more about you and your journey and then sharing some strategies that could help us fellow entrepreneurs be able to connect in a meaningful way as we grow our business. So tell us, yeah, me too. Uh, (laughs) Tell, please tell us like what kind of led you in the direction of you doing the work that you do? Because it is rare that you see it. It's a lot of bro marketing out there, right? (laughs) Yes. So much bro marketing. Yes. I think we're burning down the walls of that slowly, but we're I, us, all of us non-bro marketers are going to take over the world. It's only a matter of time. <laughs> yes. Heart centered, heart centered. So tell me more about your journey. What led you in this direction? Oh gosh, it's a doozy. I don't even remember how much detail I gave you when we actually had a connection chat. So some of this may be new information. Um, I, so I, I was in the corporate world for, uh, 11 years in a very male dominated industry. Um, totally unrelated to my degree too. I have a degree in criminology and psychology. I ended up in uh, corporate sales in the automotive world. <laughs> long, long story there that I won't, that I won't bore you with. And <laughs> <laughs> so funny, right? Like completely unrelated. And 
that just sort of like paid the bills. I bought a house while I was there, all, all of these things. And I knew that I didn't want to stay there. That was only ever a means to an end. And I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, but I was sort of feeling it out and trying out new opportunities. And I started um, teaching bootcamp classes in person. And then I started getting opened up to this whole world of the online space. And I went back to school uh, while I was still at my corporate job for holistic nutrition. And then I finally quit my corporate job to take my online business full time. And in and around all of this, I was also in a nine year long relationship. And <laughs> on Christmas Eve of 2018, I got a knock on the door um, of my partner at the time of our, of our house. And it was his previous girlfriend standing at the door to let me know that uh, he had been having an affair off and on with her for our entire nine years together. <laughs> I couldn't remember if I told you this or not. So this is new information. No. Okay. <laughs> oh my word. So then I, I ended the relationship, but in the months that followed, um, I, there were devastating lies that came out. Like I, I found out that he'd had a secret house for years, 170 meters from our driveway. Um, it, it was just, it was basically like double life and, and right under my nose <laughs> essentially. And yeah. he had everybody fooled. Uh, there were people that didn't even believe me when I came out with the story because he had portrayed his role so well that no one thought he was capable of this. So I ended the relationship and he and I worked together on our house to do some renovations and stuff, get it ready for sale for about six months afterwards. And then I took off to Bali and I was only going to stay for six weeks and then travel to a bunch of other different places. And I ended up staying more or less for eight months because I just fell in love with it. And I developed such a community there so fast that that was actually where people started pointing out to me. They're like, you know, you people connect with you so easily. And then I started thinking back, I'm like, oh, this has always come easily to me, but I never thought of myself that way because I am also an introvert and I am totally cool to like fly under the radar and just not really, you know, that I, I, I don't think of myself as like being out there with everybody, but people do connect with me very easily. And then I started to realize that there are skills in there that you can actually teach too. And I had switched into like podcasting and business coaching by this point. Um, and then I just, during the pandemic, I, I got grounded uh, in Canada and I just started to feel like I'd lost my sense of purpose in my business because I, I love podcasting. I, I love talking business strategy, all of those things, but it wasn't filling me up. And I kept coming back to these conversations that I would have with people and then people were still having with me, like talking about relationships and um, just how, how to connect. And I realized that there was this huge need and that that was what, what not only lit me up the most, but had been threaded throughout every single thing that I had done all along. And I was like, this is the natural next step is to teach people how to have better connections and to, to be able to connect with people in a more meaningful, deeper, more purposeful way, especially because we are all feeling more isolated and alone than we ever have before. So mm -hmm. that was how I ended up sort of switching into human connection. And I've just never felt more in alignment because of that. And it's just so interesting that when you look back at the journey and you can see all the pieces that were falling into place to make something happen, you're like, oh, okay. It, it, it makes a little bit more sense now. <laughs> yeah. I was on my walk today, even thinking about my own journey and just how, what led me into creating the program that I have is my signature program and how little pieces of uh, the development of this signature program were kind of like laid out throughout my journey. Now I can see it, but I didn't realize how that was shaping what was the meaningful work that I would be doing today. So I love that you shared that. Um, and you kind of honored the process of, and, and of getting there, but also having an, enough boldness and bravery. And we're going to put in their courage, all of them. Okay. <laughs> You know, to make that shift because it's easier to go with strategy, right? Mm -hmm. um, there, that's why there's so many biz strategists. Um, I'm one of them. <laughs> Not that I'm, I, I, I've chosen it for an easy thing, but that is one of my gifts. So 
you know what your gift is, is human connection. So I want to know from you, why do we struggle so much with that? And why aren't we seeing it as a necessary part of business growth? Such a beautiful question. I think that there's so many of us who the online space has become very noisy. And I think there's so many of us who have gotten caught up in, and I've been guilty of this too, we all have, in seeing all of these, just being bombarded with all of these posts and stuff all the time and, and different strategies and stuff. But a lot of them are uh, like bro, bro marketing type things like you and I were, were talking about before. And it's like these quick fixes and everything else. And we want, we want that. We're like, well, what's the fastest way to six figures? Uh, how do I get to seven figures? How do I scale? How do I do this? And what's interesting about the online space too, is that there's sort of been these, these trends over time where when the online space first started, Um, I, I feel like there had to be more trust built because it was all very new and I wasn't in the space at that point, but I think that that was when you started to see a bit more one-on-one coaching. Then that sort of shifted into DIY because so many of us wanted to scale too. So a DIY became the thing and that removed a lot of the human connection, a lot of the human element. And what I'm, I'm seeing, and and Jasmine, tell me if, if you're kind of noticing the same thing as well, I'm sort of seeing this shift back to people want more access to the the human that they're learning from because we are starved right now we are absolutely starved for that connection piece and we want to learn from real humans we're tired of just looking at our screens not to mention i think a lot of us are waking up to the fact that the the online space just like anything else in life is not a one-size-fits-all approach And that was partly why it has taken me so long to get to where I am because, and you know, we all are on our journey. We're all exactly where we need to be at at the exact right times. But I kept getting sucked into, you should be doing this. You should be doing it this way. You should be doing, um, you know, this, this like webinar style thing that then scales to this funnel and whatever. And what I finally came to the conclusion of much more recently is I'm like, I just want to do one-on-one. Not exclusively, but I, I, I just really want to do one-on-one right now because I get to connect with people so deeply and I, I have people open up about some really heavy topics that they aren't necessarily going to be comfortable opening up in a group setting either. And it's not really work that they can necessarily do quite as effectively on their own. So at least not, not going as, as deep as they want to. So the one-on-one is the best fit for me right now, but it's, it looks different for everybody, but the only way we can start to build a relationship with, with people is by putting in the effort, even if they're going to buy DIY, because DIY might be the perfect fit for you and your people. And that's amazing, but we still have to put in the work to build the connections with the people that we are looking to purchase from us. It, the, the connection piece never changes. It's just a matter of how much interaction, like how, how much access they have to you. That's really the only difference. Yeah. I am screaming on the inside <laughs> <laughs> with joy um, because that was, I feel like 2020 was my discovery of that. Yep. And really stepping into that. It was or what it was something I had already known in 2016 when I first started my business. And when I first started it, because I didn't have any history, I just followed my intuition. I followed what felt good to me. And that was the model that I created. And that was the position that put me into knowing when I needed to pivot. But in 2020, I got so engrossed with you must do it this way and immediately felt disconnected. So I am the same exact way. I'm a boutique style coach. I want to work with my people one-on-one because I know that my people are dealing with overwhelm. They're dealing with fear. And that's a hard place to be in when you're a driven, ambitious person and to actually state it out loud to other people as you're trying to heal and move through that journey and also build and grow a business. And I love that you said that. And that's why I feel like there's such a critical part of every business owner's journey where you have to do a full, honest assessment of yourself, but most importantly, of what your client needs. And it may not be a group program, right? It may be a one-on-one 
you know, private access. But like you said, I'm seeing more and more people go back to that. Yeah, absolutely. And there's more of us now than those That's who are doing the one to many. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And and I actually have a, a friend, uh, a really good friend and a mentor of mine. Um, she does almost exclusively one-on-one and she has shattered all of these ideas around you can't uh, make X amount of money when you do one-on-one because she is very protective of her personal time. Um, she has mm-hmm. great boundaries. She is not burning herself out and she's hitting like half million dollar years mm-hmm. and she's doing almost entirely one-on-one. Mm-hmm. And she's killing it. And people love her because I've had sessions with her and, and she is absolutely incredible at what she does. Like she's transformational. So that, that is why she is able to do as well as she does is because that word of mouth gets out via connections, right? <laughs> via relationships mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that type of referral business. You, you can't, there's no amount of money that can purchase Facebook ads that will get you that kind of result. Mm-hmm. And there, for any type of, of, you know, true intimate connections, Facebook ads cannot buy connection. They cannot buy the relationship. They can start the relationship. They can plant a seed, but they do not build the relationship. You are the one who builds your relationship, you and and your team, you know, depending on, on uh, how many people you have with you, mm-hmm. you and, and your brand, you are creating that relationship. And it's going to take more than just a Facebook ad or, or a single email to build that. Yeah, absolutely. And and what a beautiful reminder for us all. And if you're listening right now, you know, pause this, do a, do a journal activity before you come back and, and listen to the remainder, remainder of it. And really ask yourself, you know, am I, am I fully aligned with who I am? Am I aligned with the desires of my clients? Is, are they asking for more? You know, many of us, there's no cookie cutter approach to business. There isn't any one size fits all to business, which is why I often tell people we can live in true abundance and share as much free content as you need. It will never replace the one-to-one help that someone could get if they're working with someone that can help them get to the next level. Exactly. And I heard it may have been Gary V actually. I know, I know we're like not talking about bro marketing, but he does make some good points sometimes. (laughs) 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 He he made a really good point about um, sharing, uh, you know, to, to stop putting limits on what you share in terms of free content and like worrying about keeping things behind the paywall, because he's like, what people are paying for is access. He's like, they're paying for access. He's like, don't, don't save all of your best shit for behind the paywall. You want people to get to know how awesome you are and how good you are at what you do. And then they will have no problem paying for access to you because mm-hmm. that's what they really want. That's what they ultimately want. That, that free content just builds is, is part of what builds the relationship. And then you get to take that to the next level when they start working with you. And one-on-one yes. is not right for everybody. But it is, it, it is a really great way to have, have more interactions with people and really form a significant bond that even if you don't end up working with a ton of people one-on-one, those people are going to go out and tell all their people that they built something really cool with you, like that they built a really strong relationship with you. And that is only going to, to serve you in the best possible ways. Yes, Absolutely. All right. So, you know, you come to find out, you know, we need connection, but for some of us skeptics out there, (laughs) we know you're out there. (laughs) What would you say are like the top three reasons why we need to implement connection into our business? And I want to specifically talk about if it's okay, a recent connection that you made that opened up an opportunity for you to be featured. Oh yes. Okay. 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 Yeah. And that was just because you took your same principles that you're teaching and implement it in your life in a genuine way. So take it away. Oh, I love that. Okay. So I'll, I'll tell the story. So I I got featured in Forbes, Jasmine, as, as you mentioned, uh, in the intro and it was something I've been writing down my journal for like three years, but I'd never, I'd never pitched them. I had, I, I figured, you know, when the time was right, the time would be right. And uh, somebody reached out in my DMs to just let me know that they uh, had listened to one of my podcast episodes. They really liked it. And she just seemed really genuine. And, and, you know, we all get 
like the, the shady DMs, right? The, the slimy ones where it's like, oh, come join such and such Facebook group when you've never spoken to them before. It's like, really? <laughs> and, <laughs> and she just seemed really like warm and genuine. And I could just tell she just, she just kind of wanted to chat. And I offered to jump on the phone with her. I was like, oh, you know, let's just jump on, let's jump on a Zoom call. So we booked an appointment, we jumped on and I, I did not do any research into her. I, I don't think I even clicked in her profile, to be honest. I literally did not know who she was. And the only thing I knew was that like, I'm, I'm in Canada right now. And I knew uh, she mentioned that she was also in Canada. So I knew she was Canadian. That was all I knew. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I jumped on the, the Zoom with her and we had a great chat. And uh, she was asking about being on my podcast. And she was asking, I just you know pivoted into human connection away from business. And she specializes in like business and finance. So I did let her know that it wasn't going to be a great fit, but I said, if there's anything else I can do to support you, let me know. Um, which I think is a really key question that is really important to ask. And Jasmine, you and I asked each other that when we first connected too, mm -hmm. like, how can I support you? And mm -hmm. she said, well, you know, I, I would love to, to get hooked up with, uh, some other podcast interviews. So I said, great. So I connected her with three or four, um, former clients and, and, uh, friends and connections and stuff. And then she said, well, how can I support you? And I said, to be honest, I, I'm just, I'm going through this transition in my business right now. I said, a little bit overwhelmed. Uh, I love that you're asking, but I don't actually have an answer right now because <laughs> I don't really know exactly what to ask for. And she's like, well, I could feature you in Forbes. Would that help? <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was joking. I'm like, pardon? <laughs> yes. like, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a writer for Forbes and, and I'd love to do a feature on you. And I almost dropped the, the, the laptop. I'm like, oh, well, that, that would be helpful. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, I will take you up on that. And that was just born purely from a very basic human interaction. But so many of us, I think sometimes, it, and I've, I have done this myself, been a little bit cynical about things in the DMs or like people asking for things from us and just feeling like it's like a take, take, take and not enough giving in return that it's not an even flow. And if you're someone who doesn't have boundaries, that can absolutely be an issue. If you are already feeling incredibly drained, then maybe you need more boundaries around that. Mm -hmm. But also just pay attention to the people who are just showing up in a genuine way because mm -hmm. you can feel the difference. Mm -hmm. Like you, you can start to really feel the difference. And if you, if you feel like you're getting cynical because of your DMs or, or your, your, the spam popping up in your email all the time or whatever, um, of people demanding things of you, then try to just sort of pull back on that a little bit and take a little bit more of a macro approach. Because the other thing that I have started to really think about more is that every time I say yes, not, not every single time, but I find by far the majority of the time I say yes to these types of interactions that feel okay to me. I'm like, okay, you know, like, I'll, I'll, but even if nothing comes of it, like I don't go in with the expectation which I think is a huge, that's difference. the key. That's yes. the key. You can't go in with the expectation, but if you are open to what could come of it, because even if nothing comes of that connection right then or whatever, you don't know who could end up connected to that person that then ends up getting referred to you. Like I just, um, I'm signing a, a huge client that he, <laughs> he's somebody from like a, a tiny little area in the States um, runs like a, a major company and stuff. And he heard about me by someone, he doesn't even remember who someone told him about me that apparently we went to an event together pre pre pandemic. Uh, apparently yes. we went to an event together and he doesn't even remember who I have no idea who it would be. And apparently it's somebody I spoke to in passing at an event. There've been other times where like, I've been connected with somebody by a mutual friend and I, it was when I was still working my corporate job, but I just gotten into the online space and we'd already had the call set up. And I was like, I was just so tired. I'm like, oh, I don't want to get on this call. I'm exhausted. I'm like, mm -hmm. but it's, it's fine. I don't want to break a commitment. I get in the call. The woman changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> like she practically changed my life. By the end of the call, she had convinced me that I needed to quit my corporate job. And I'd already kind of been moving towards it anyway, but she, yeah. she really like gave me the final push. She, and she keeps popping up in my life ever since at like the most pivotal rock bottom moments. I swear she has radar. She then pops up in my DMs. She's like, how are you really? And I'm like, I'm not good. She's like, let's hop on the phone. We've never even met in person. <laughs> like, and I think more and more of us are having these interactions, especially in a pandemic world where you can yeah. build powerful relationships 
that don't have to involve the in-person element either. Yeah. And we have all learned that in, in new ways. And it can be difficult sometimes not get cynical about that too, because like, we just want to hug humans. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it is helpful to be able to build these things up now. And then we can hug yeah. hopefully soon. <laughs> yes. It's so true. Oh my word. And you know, like I just remember, I recall even like at the beginning of my stages and I was in the healthcare uh, world specifically, and they would always come up like, how did you get this sponsor? And how did you do that? And how did you like, I want to do that. And I would say, well, networking and building relationships and they would get annoyed. And it was like, but that's what it is. Like, there's no application. Nope. Nothing. There's no application. It's just genuinely connecting with people and not having any expectations for anything else. That expectation piece is so key. And I don't know about you, but as an introvert, the word networking has always made my skin itch. I'm like, oh. yes, <laughs> yes. Just, yes, even the word I'm like, oh, that sounds awful. Yeah, <laughs> but when yeah. you remove that element and you just think of it as connecting, just connecting with people, just building relationships and very organically. Yeah. Then beautiful things can come out of that, that you, you may have never even imagined the possibilities of, and that's yeah. how businesses are built. Businesses are built on the backs of connection. There is no mm-hmm. business out there. There is not one single one of us who gets to where we're going by ourselves. Absolutely. It, we are all standing on the shoulders of giants and mm-hmm. we have all gotten help along the way in one form or another. I'm not saying you haven't had to work your ass off. I'm not saying you haven't had to do the late nights, the early mornings, the mm-hmm. sleep deprivation, all, all of the things that unfortunately seem to be semi-standard, at least in the beginning days of, of entrepreneurship. But it's it, there's so many things that we can, if we're open to them, we can be open to receiving those gifts. Because that's another big piece of it is the worthiness piece. Because mm-hmm. for me, this has started to come up um, it, lately, I, I think, but a huge part of entrepreneurship is the self-development work and it mm-hmm. throws you into these whole new realms. I think that's why entrepreneurs tend to get along best with entrepreneurs because it's like mm-hmm. other people sometimes just don't understand the world that we're in and the, like this, mm-hmm. this weird bubble that we sort of mm-hmm. live and work in. <laughs> mm-hmm. And when you start to look at that, there were some layers that I had to uncover in terms of just as an example, looking at the the incredible level of of support system that I have in place. And there were moments the last few months where I was like, am I even worthy of like having this level of support? Like I have a support system that there are people who cut their right right arm off to have. And it's such a privilege to have that. But then I was like, yeah, but these, these, this support system is what allows me to show up in the way that I do so that I can give back to the people around me and help be part of other people's support systems to give back in that way as well. It's so interconnected. It's so interconnected. And, you know, I appreciate you sharing that because I think, you know, we, I would not be truly honoring my own journey without even mentioning the fact that we have to get to a place for some of us of being ready for that openness. Many of us may have had experiences in childhood or adulthood that our initial reaction is to constrict ourselves, to not allow people to connect with you because you're afraid or scared or putting yourself at risk for the cuckoo birds that happen to exist out there in the world. And yes, they do exist. They will always be a part of our lives or, you know, the universe or or, or society as some whole. But what is necessary for us to understand is that, again, that full reminder of you, you cannot do this journey alone. It's not possible. And when you open yourself up to true, genuine connection, and you do the healing work necessary, you'll notice that, that the, the right type of people like Emily will pop up into your life in such amazing ways. And it'll be so many of them. It'll be numerous amounts that those one or two bad apples will mean nothing. They'll be irrelevant. And so for those of us who have may have dealt with trauma or grief of some sort uh, and are afraid of putting themselves out there, um, be aware of the fact of how much beauty and love and awesomeness and more abundance in your life that you bring 
by remaining open to that. And that's why this conversation was such an important one to have. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I totally agree. And it's, you know, I, I seem to end up working more with uh, entrepreneurs than anybody else. And I don't actually target entrepreneurs, but I just mm-hmm. seem to attract them because I think it's um, a lot of times our personal relationships can suffer mm-hmm. because of our business. Mm-hmm. Again, it's like, you know, we're in this, this online space and it's easy to just sort of let the the personal stuff slide. And mm-hmm. we won't get to where we're going unless we do that deep inner healing work. And that's what I work with people on the most because we have to be open to that, that receiving piece, because a lot of times so many of us fear failure, Mm -hmm. but a lot of us also fear success. Mm -hmm. And I've had to work through both because with success comes that receiving piece. And a lot of times it's far easier to give love because we're like proving ourselves as opposed to receiving it. And that's sort of the real work. And with, with success comes a lot of, comes more receiving, it comes with more visibility. It comes with potentially more haters, trolls, all the things that you have to be solidly grounded and rooted in yourself mm-hmm. to be able to withstand that. Yep. And there are people who, you know, especially when I was in Bali, I would see these, these, um, I'm 34, but they're like really, like, like really young <laughs> sort of kids in my mind to be like, like 2022, I'm like, sweetheart, live a few years and, and, you know, circle back to me. Okay. Go get some life experience. And they would just want to go, go viral. And like, they'd have these like hundreds of thousands of followers and stuff. And I am not someone who has ever wanted fame ever. Um, and part of the reason why is that with everything has a price. And yeah. with more visibility, fame, notoriety, all of those things, yes, you can have a far bigger impact, circle of influence, all those things. You can do incredible things with that, but it comes with a price. And the yeah. price is that you are going to have a lot more attention on you, potentially negative, like all mm-hmm. of these different things. If you don't do the inner work now to work on yourself from within and to build a strong circle around you with, with strong connections you're going to have not only a much harder time getting to that level of success that you want, you're going to struggle. Once you get there, you will mm-hmm. crumble because Absolutely. You, you will burn out. You will be, you know, you will get comments that will devastate you. And I'm not saying that they can still be devastating even after you, after you do do all the work, but it can be so much harder. So that's why it's so important to do this work, to build the relationship and the connection that you have with yourself first and foremost. And to then go outward from there, like you have to start with you, then you move on to your personal relationships, then you move on to the business relationships. Like it's sort of that circle of influence that that's what is going to serve you the best is start, start with you. You're in the center of the circle. You need to start with you first. And that's often the hardest one. Then you go outward and you just keep building from there. Yep. And, and the inner work never ends. Never. So for the, ta- for the Tash checkers out there, you know who y'all are. <laughs> we see you, type A's. We see you. <laughs> you can't check it off, okay? Um, but I, I love that. All right, finally, um, I, I'm curious to know what is like one strategy you would say an entrepreneur should do to open themselves up to human connection? What's one thing they should do? I think saying yes more often Mm -hmm. within reason, because we still need to, you know, like I said, boundaries, protecting our time, all of those things. Mm -hmm. But uh, did you ever read Shonda Rhimes year of yes? Yep. It was, it was so well done. I really, uh, yeah. I read it like a few years ago, but it was, it was really good. And the audible a, version is really good. The I think audio. I listened to it on audible because I love yeah. hearing her talk. She's amazing. She's so yeah. funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the reason why I bring this up is because a recurring theme that has been coming up a lot, <laughs> like so often that I'm like, okay, universe, I see you <laughs> <laughs> is this idea of surrender and really surrendering to what is and not fighting the journey. Um, a, a mentor of mine was talking to me about, I went to her with, with some personal problems, but the things were like also then holding me back in my business too. And to be clear, I'm still working through some of them because I'm leaning into this art of surrender. Um, she said, you know, it's like you're, you're standing in the middle of the river trying to fight and claw your way upstream. 
Mm -hmm. And you're wondering why it's not working and why Mm -hmm. it's so hard and you're not moving. She's like, as opposed to letting the river carry you on your journey and you may, that's carrying you into the unknown. You don't know exactly where it's going, but that's going to be a lot easier. And you're going to get there a lot faster. You're going to get to wherever you're going a lot faster as opposed to fighting it along the way. So this idea of surrender to me has come up a lot in terms of saying yes to opportunities that are presented to me, even if they make me uncomfortable, because I'm like, this is just sort of surrendering. Like the universe is throwing something at me to see what I do with it. Yes, you still need to have boundaries. All of those, I will always be, I will always bring that part up. But I think that it is important to see that just because something makes you uncomfortable when it's presented to you, it might be making you uncomfortable for a really good reason. You just don't know it yet. And you may not feel ready or prepared, but if you surrender and and say yes to these opportunities that are maybe falling into your lap, that may not even look like bright, shiny opportunities. It's just like these little things. And you're like, "Eh, no, I'm just going to push this aside. You might want to rethink that. And I've started doing that in big ways that make me very uncomfortable. (laughs) And I will, I will report back to see, uh, you know, in like six months or so to see what comes of some of these things <laughs> yes. but so far. Yeah. It, I, it's, it's making life a lot easier because I'm not, I'm not fighting it every step of the way. And I think that's really, really important. Like that conversation, my DM turned into a Forbes feature. And yeah. if I had not said yes to that, that wouldn't have turned into what it did. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Going back to, um, new entrepreneur, Emily, <laughs> little baby. Yes. Little <laughs> so baby. <innocent>. Emily. <laughs> <laughs> that is one word of advice you would tell her as she is building out her business. Oh Lord. <laughs> it's been a wild ride. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Um, I would say probably patience, which has never been my strong point. Um, still isn't. (laughs) (laughs) So this is part of the the surrender and the saying yes, but to have patience, because I think that again, in the online space, we just get bombarded a lot with these messages of like, uh, 10 K followers in 30 days. And like, everything is about the speed, but things don't come quickly. The best Mm -hmm. things in life usually take longer to build because otherwise if they come very quickly, they can be taken away more quickly. But if you, Mm. if you take the time to build the foundation, you're going to be building something more sustainable, even though it takes longer and it can be very frustrating sometimes. You're like, why am I not where I'm going? Wow. (laughs) And so good. Yeah. Having that, that patience, I could not have built a business at like 19, 20. I, I could not have, I, because Mm -hmm. I, I always said to my younger self, like when I was 18 or 19, I'm like, I hope patience comes with age because (laughs) I don't have a lot of it. And I don't know that it's come with age so much as many, many trials (laughs) that have forced me to have a little bit more patience. (laughs) It's still not my strong point, but yes, patience, I think would be the the biggest thing. (laughs) Oh, that was so powerful. So powerful. (laughs) I love that you shared that. Um, Where can people contact you? Because I feel that you are so awesome. I really, really do. Um, I think you're pretty awesome. (laughs) Thank you. I love your energy. I love what you represent. So let the listeners know where they can reach out and contact you. Oh my gosh, for sure. For sure. So I probably um, hang out on Instagram the most over at Emily Goff Coach. Um, Goff is G-O-U-G-H. So cough with a G. It's (laughs) literally cough with a G. (laughs) See, that's just, I just trademark that. That's just be like my slogan. Um, (laughs) I'm also over at the room to grow podcast. Uh, so that's easy to spell. Um, so we come up with new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday and, uh, yeah, I'm over at like Emily Goff coaching.com, but those are the easiest places to find me. And, uh, the best, the best way to work with me right now is, is one-on-one for anybody who's interested, pop in the DMS, we can have a chat or just say, hi, I'm fine with that too. Cause I like the connection. So <laughs> Yes. Yes. And listen, y'all, she's a real deal. Definitely reach out to her. Um, Breath of fresh air. And it's so great. I, I, this, this is why I love what I do because I get a chance to highlight other heart led, you know, heart centered purpose led entrepreneurs. And we need to know more of them and celebrate more of them because there are so many of us out there that are, that are 
that are doing really amazing work with our clients and impacting communities in beautiful ways. So thank you for being on the show. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much, Jasmine. This has just been a delight and I am just so happy that we, that we got a chance to connect and I just think you're amazing. I just, I think you're awesome. So thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks for tuning into the show. Dive in deeper by visiting the show notes for this episode or listening to more episodes on jasminehaley.com. If you found value in the show, share with a friend or leave us a review. I'll see you next time.